Hey guys, it's Roderick. I'm here with The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 13 Reunion, Part 2. So, you already know what it means when the glasses come out. That means the library is open and folks are gonna, some folks are going to get red. Now, not everybody's going to get red. Some folks may catch some sprays, but there is some reading that needs to be done. So, let's just get right into it. Welcome to this channel if you're new. This is where we discuss television shows and films and I sports, screenwriting, acting, and directing. But for the next the week or two, we're going to do surrounding television. So, before I get into this review, I did another Real Housewives story time. This is about the Gorga family retreat. And as I said in the video, a lot of the things that happened in the season five episode with the retreat was quite portentous of what we're dealing with now. So go check that out either before or after that, because it will add a lot of flavor to what we're seeing right now. So let's just get into it because you know what? Things need to be said. So we, the re, part two kicks off and Teresa's trying to peddle this like lie that Melissa and Joe had something to do with her going to jail. And she really doesn't believe that. She literally was just putting that out there to see if she, it, gets, it could get some traction until Andy pretty much shuts that down being like, well, really, you are married to the person who put you in jail. Nobody put you in jail but the other person. Now, as you also all recall, Teresa, jail, Teresa did not have to go to jail. As certain sources revealed, Teresa could have, would have gotten parole if she had revealed her financial records to the court, to which she did not want to do so. So the once again, the person who put her in jail is her ex-husband, not Joe and Melissa. But what she's trying to allege is that they're hanging out with the person with, with Joe's ex-partner and all this stuff. And just really, she's like literally throwing things on the wall to try to see, you know, what'll stick and what won't stick, right? And, you know, I was talking to my best friend Leah yesterday and I, we were talking about how the older I get, one of the things I realize is how accurately I can first see a person, place, or thing and then realize what it is for, what, you know, what something is, right? And that sometimes I may choose not to believe what I see because I'm like, is that really it? And one of the things I'm really validated by watching this reunion is a lot of the things I have said previously in the previous videos about certain people, places, and things have really come to light to be really true. And we're gonna get to every one of them. Now, I don't take any validation in being right. I just talk about what I see, right? So if you don't like what I talk about, change what I see. That's the Nene Meeks quote. Okay, so now we get to Rachel Fuda. Again, I've covered this whole adoption thing. It is what it is. If she's happy, if the son's happy, if John's happy, fine, whatever. Good Bali for them, right? But the real interesting question was, now we find out that that Bo Deedle or somebody has been, in, you know, contacted the birth mother. Now, the fact is, is that one of my dis distaste for the whole situation was the fact that the birth mother, you know, it was extinguishing the birth mother's rights. But if the birth mother didn't put a contest or did not kind of fight the whole adoption thing, then, you know, that's on her, right? So, I, you know, the whole, again, I just find it distasteful, but if she didn't fight for her rights to have Jaden, then she really, you can't really complain about what Rachel Fuda did, right? So that's all the thing on that. But I'm really kind of heavily side-eyeing Louie now because I'm like, okay, you have private investigators and now you have dipped into this whole situation with the whole adoption. It just really is giving me you know, Dexter and Alexis Colby tease, right? Like if Teresa's like Alexis, you remember she was married when she was married to Dex and he, they were all both at plotting and doing whatever. That whole relationship is really giving me Alexis and Dex tease, right? So if that's, if you don't know your Colby um, dynasty history, you can Google Wikipedia, but that's really what that relationship is really giving me, right? So then we get to Jackie and Jen Fessler. Now, Jen Fessler brought her A game. She was like, I ain't trying to be no friend of the show forever. So I'm going to get all the way done up, all the way made up. And I'm here for it. I have always been or always liked Jen Fessler. I like what she brought to the show. She brings a state of reasonableness, reasonableness and logic and really kind of even keel that is desperately needed on this cast. Um, and I like her makeover, girl. I was like, do you? Like, she looked really good. You know, now, and Jackie looks good, still kind of boring, but, you know, good for her. And also bravo for her, bravo on bravo and her for deciding, okay, my health comes first 
over this, you know, reality television show. The fact that she decided to be different the show. And I also give Jackie credit for saying, you know what, it was hard me being friend of the show because I think if she were to be a little bit more honest, she would say that's why she came for Danielle is hard. That it was. That it wasn't necessarily anything that Danielle did, but it was hard seeing somebody kind of take your place and while you're, you know, and it be either a mutual decision or a one, one and a half decision of yours or what you wanted to do. Because I think that really is where a lot of Danielle and Jackie's tension came from. Um, and I would have liked for Andy to kind of explore that and kind of bring that up. But once again, we'll get to kind of how Andy's kind of complicit in this kabuki theater that's going on on, on this show. But um, I thought, because I think that that would have been a really kind of relevant thing to bring up. Now, it probably was brought up, but it may have been hit to the editing floor. But, you know, whatever, right? So then, you know, we get to the whole, like, he's, like, asking about Ireland. And, yeah, Ireland was a great show because Dolores told those girls, y'all ain't breaking shit. I ain't paying for shit. Keep this, you know, under wraps. And then the whole Melissa drunk dialing her ex thing. And then Teresa wants to get and say, oh, my God, that's so disrespectful. And the brother I grew up with would never have allowed that. To literally say that somehow the brother she grew up with no longer exists because he's now married to Teresa, which has been Teresa's refrain since he's been married to Melissa, that he's not the same person. And quite frankly, Teresa, hashtag mind your own business, right? Because again, it's a double standard. You keep wanting to put your mouth on your brother's marriage, but somehow or another, every time someone puts their mouth on your marriage, you want to get upset. It works both ways, right? And the problem, and then the Melissa and you know, are just like, Melissa and Teresa, they go at it. And this is where Melissa looks really bad, right? Because the fact is Melissa is so easily triggered and just really, you know, it just really wants to kind of out Teresa, Teresa, and it's going to be a losing battle every time. Because Teresa has been Teresa down pat for a whole, for 50 whole years, right? So Melissa needs to quit, quit trying to play the Teresa game. And it ends up being more about being right and being petty as opposed to being the bigger person. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as I've said, somebody has to be the bigger person. And Melissa misses that opportunity every time. Now, I know I was going to say, why should she be the bigger person? Why is she taking away the Ohio? And there's only so many times a person can get attacked. There's only so many times a person's name can get dragged in the mud. There's only so many times you can be cheap trying to break up her marriage. Joe ain't going nowhere. Their marriage is fine. Teresa is annoyance and at best a, a huge disrespectful stain right? But the fact is, I recognize how, how hurtful it could be, how disrespectful it could be, but the fact is, somebody has to make that step, and I just I'm going to keep singing that song, and Melissa misses that step every time because she just chooses to try to go toe-for-toe -toe with Melissa, with Teresa, and she's going to lose every time because Teresa is good at being Teresa, and production is going to end up siding with Teresa. Not necessarily to the detriment of Melissa like not being on the show, but Teresa Teresa's always, always going to get a positive plus net cup, right? So I was just like, eh, girl, like, whatever, right? Then we get into Margaret, right? And I didn't know that Jan had died. I was like, oh, my God. Jan died? There was a whole funeral? Why was this not on camera, okay? And this goes to my first read for production, right? So what is this, right? Is this housewives telling stories that they want to tell? Is this like Housewives Canterbury Tales, right? So these women get together and they film and they have lunch and they make up petty fights and we don't get any type of view into their real lives, how they're dealing with their families, how they're dealing with their careers, how they're dealing with their children, how they're managing anything. We just get these bunch of faux bullshit kabuki theater fights and the real meat and potatoes that go into making them corporeal people are left out. I would have loved to see Jan's funeral. I know that sounds gauche, but Marge dealing with the death of her first husband while married to her first husband, who she cheated with, with a stepdaughter she doesn't talk to, would have is far more interesting, 
right? Then quite frankly, rich for Rachel Fuda and this fucking bullshit ass adoption. I'm sorry. Like that goes to who you are. That goes to how you're dealing with your life. That goes to, to everything. And the fact of like somehow, you know, this was left out. It wasn't even mentioned. There was nothing during filming during this season to let us know that Jan was even dead. Like, like put drop down in the comments. Did y'all know Jan had died from watching this show? Not from, not from the internet, not from social media. Did you know Jan was dead when you were watching the show? Did you know that Margaret and her stepdaughter, did work? it was difficult for her to go to the funeral with her stepdaughter not talking to her from watching this season, right? That is where I say production is complicit, right? So quit acting like, 